Monday. Hey folks, welcome back. Money and Politics for a Monday, January 31, the last day of the month of uh, January, and then tomorrow will be in February. We're going to have some things coming up in February. I believe we're going to get the fourth quarter earnings uh, should be coming up in February. Don't know when. I would say sometime, I'm guessing, between the 15th and the end of the month on the 28th. Uh, on the 10th of February, we're going to have in-mode earnings coming up. So that's something I'm really looking forward to, as well as the humble earnings, because that'll be for the fourth quarter and the full year, although I'm more interested in the fourth quarter because there wasn't a lot of revenues to be looking at in the full year. However, moving forward, we will be looking very closely at Humble's revenues uh, because now we're going to have some revenues to look at and we'll be able to compare apples to apples. There wasn't much uh, happening on the humble front today. Barely by the uh, narrowest of margins did it uh, stop in the green. And even then it uh, was on low volume. So I'm going to say the market, I think, is reacting. You know, by the way, have you ever seen these videos? We, I think we all have. It's underwater. It's in the ocean. And you got the school of fish. And the fish are just kind of darting this way. And then they dart that way. And they seem to have no momentum. But they, they all scurry one way. And then they all scurry another way. To me, that's a pretty good illustration of people on Wall Street. Because we had all this, oh, my God, we're, we're going to hell. And, not, you know, we're going down, and, and then today they just turn around and come back. They overthink things. They overreact to things. And this is why I tell you, if you're a retail investor and you just remain calm, the long term, you're going to come out ahead. You, you can't react to the emotional breakdowns of the traders on Wall Street. They're frantic Hell, I don't know what, you know, some percent of these guys are on cocaine while they're trading. I just want you to use some common sense, folks. Um, we've got some real problems in the world, and sometimes things come up. But I said so many times before, there's the 50-year chart of the S&P. And while it goes down at times, it also bounces back. And so in the long term, you're going to be doing good not to try to second-guess uh, and, and get depressed about some of these near-term events that may come and may go. I'll be watching that for you. That's why we call it Money in Politics. Now, our number one performer that we've talked about today, uh, FNGU, this is the exchange-traded note that has 10 different great companies. Well, I don't know about Twitter being great, but uh, it has 10 different companies. And as you see, closed at $28, up $4.18, which was a gain of 17% on the day, and that was on healthy volume of 6.4 million shares, where the 10-day average had been 3.4 million shares. So that's our number one traded uh, stock as far as growth, but we had other good ones today. The market was up broadly across the board, and here we have Zynex and um, seven dollars and 92 cents i mentioned this the other day let's look at this one year one month chart and you can see just back on uh, january the 4 we are at nine dollars and 35 cents uh and just the other day on the 27th this is the 31st i'm recording this so uh on the 27th we are down about 7 18. nice bounce back today seven percent gain on uh, about normal volume, and you can see in the lower left corner there, Yahoo's saying that this is undervalued. Again, this is where they're treating pain with uh, electronic devices. Uh, Zynex adds knee bracing to its pain managing, management division, and that came out 11 days ago. Um, and the last two quarters, they uh, exceeded revenues, you can see they matched, and the last time they failed to uh, make it was four quarters ago. So we'll see where they come out here. They are making money. They're so this is 2020 is the last. So we're about to get, it's another one along with Humble and InMode, where we're going to get the quarterly earnings 
And that's another one that we'll be closely looking forward to and want to pay attention. Uh, as you know, one of my big favorites, maybe the big favorite, kind of goes back and forth between this and TQQ. And doesn't mean I'm not keen on Humble, folks. I'm keen on Humble. It's just with Humble, as I said, we're waiting on revenues. On InMode, we're also waiting on revenues, but they've had significant revenues uh, since they came public because they were they were operating. They didn't do it. They didn't do a spec like Humble did. So uh, forty-eight dollars, and of course this has come down quite a bit. If we go to a six-month chart, and you see it topped out back in uh, the first part of November, it's been down since then. But I have continued to say I love this company, and I would continue to accumulate, and I have been personally uh, continuing to buy some uh, on the way down. But today it popped up. Almost 8%, up 355. Let's go to the one day ch chart. And uh, we were just a touch higher earlier in the day, but not much, not much more. A couple of pennies. It doesn't matter. If you, I want you to hold on to this for a couple of years, is what I would recommend. You do what you want, it's your money. And as I said to you before, but sometimes we get new viewers, you can see the last four earnings periods. They have exceeded their earnings every time. We're going to get February 10. This is when, we're, when we are going to get the earnings on in mode. Uh, I think the, uh, look, the fear would be among the investment class, the professionals, is, is, the, is the acceleration of earnings slowing down at in mode. People would want to look at that. So they're going to have great revenue. They're going to have great earnings. They make a hell of a lot of money uh, on a percentage basis on sales. Uh, they're going to continue to build their sales globally. They're doing now gynecological services, which they started in the last year. It's another stream of income. So this company, I think, is doing all kinds of things right. Could it go down? Anything could go down. Uh, but if it does go down, it's because some people will come out and write some article or the, some trader will say, yeah, they made money, but not as fast as I want them to. This is what I was saying at the very beginning. You get a lot of these people on Wall Street are like lemmings and they go swimming. And Well, Bob says that. I'm, you know, I'm going to dart the way Bob says. And they follow each other. And then all of a sudden, Joe in the corner says, no, I like it. And then, oh, oh Joe likes it. And we'll go back and buy it. And it's like, I'm not going to swim with the lemmings. Uh, I think this is a solid company. Um, I wish I had uh, a lot more than I have. And I'm continuing to buy it as I can here. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> if you're so inclined, you might. Anyway, I won't go there. I think I, think I would uh, take a look at it and have a position. And I think I would hold this position for multiple years. So these are the stocks that we've been going over. And then, uh, by the way... Let me just insert briefly that one of the pieces of news that we came out with today to put some of these stocks in in context is yes, while they have gone down uh, some of these over over time, what we have found out is that uh, January was the worst month since. We just got this news today. Is I believe January was the worst worst month uh, in the S and P since March of 2020, which was when it crashed. The market came down because of COVID. So when we say, well, we've had uh, a decline, and here's the TQQ. Let's go to a let's go to a one month chart. You can see came came down quite a ways, had been up to $97 uh, about in December. And you can see here back on January 3rd, we were at $85. We went down to $51, and now we are at just under, just under uh, $62, as you can see. Uh, heavy volume, 113 million shares traded. This is going to go up three times faster than the NASDAQ, the TQQQ, 
and three times it'll go down three times faster. It goes up three times faster, goes down three times faster. But again, it is one for holding on to for a long time. And I think the selling in the NASDAQ, in the tech stocks, uh, was overdone. So you're getting these bounce backs, and that's where you also got it in the, uh, what I showed you earlier, the FNGU, that was up 17%. So um, I think I read the, yeah, in mode and Zynex and TQQ and um, let me check real quick the UPRO this is the three times UPRO is three times the S&P 500 so that was up uh, about five percent today went up three dollars and 27 cents to 64.16 that on a little bit lighter than normal 10-day average volume. UPRO over the long term is pretty solid. You can see this decline here. That's uh, March of 2020 that we were just referring to, the uh, where it fell down because of COVID. If you think the markets, the American economy is going to grow over time, folks, UPRO <coughs> and the TQQQ are great ways to play that. So, before my voice gives out, hope you had a good day. We're going to have a lot of snow coming in central part of the country on uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, so, I, if you're out and about, I hope you're safe. Be safe traveling. You know, it's going to be six weeks from now we'll be cutting grass. So, stay safe. Stay at home if you need to. And uh, be careful traveling out and about. Again, if you want to uh, send me a note, you can do it at Money and Politics Now at Gmail. You want to follow me on Twitter, um, you can do that as well. If I can find my Twitter, Money and Politics Two. That they know it's not quite two. You can see it's P O L I T I the number two. And that's it, folks. I'll say good night. Good to be in touch. Uh, you want me to take a look at something, let me know. Uh, otherwise, we'll uh, hopefully see you tomorrow. Okay, take care.